I want to say a big thank you to Earl, YouTube handle Proverb House, for letting me use his farm to conduct this testing. Okay, I apologize for the wind noise, but uh, Nebraska is a windy place. Uh, we're going to be testing these barrels today. Got our safety shield. We're going to be using unpatched 50 caliber round ball. All these are 45 caliber bores. I left them rough bore and I didn't polish them at all. So that way still have the ridges. I'm going to bash a 50 cal lead ball down there and really ram it into place so it locks into those grooves to achieve the maximum chamber pressures possible in these. Now, I, I left all the imperfections from the drilling and uh, the touch holes are drilled opposite the thinnest face on all of these. This one, really thin. Quite looking forward to how that one's gonna turn out. And as a control piece, this is a piece of Schedule 40, 3 8 pipe with a uh, 7 16 bolt just uh, running to the end. So we will see if we can burst this as well. Okay, I got this paper here that we're going to be filling out as I test. I micrometered each one of the barrels in that pipe and I got all the different tests here and you'll see we'll, we'll go more into this later but standard charge is the max what i consider the maximum charge for that caliber so the maximum charge that would n be used under normal operation that's a standard charge we got one ball two ball then a double charge one ball two ball double charge as many balls as I can get into it. I brought some lead shot with me today, so I'm going to be putting in an ounce or two ounces of lead shot. This will be using today Go X 3FG. I'll show you this once before we get to the boons. Got my powder measure here set for 90 grains. Dump that in the bore. caliber ball, little mallet, shear off that lead slug, and pound this guy home. Set up some priming powder with some safety fuse, and then we're gonna set our safety shield over this. This is quarter inch spouting with a half inch back plate in case the breech plug fails. of lead shot. Fire in the hole! Here it is, after the first test firing. Now we will take our micrometer to this. And continue on. This is octagon barrel, double charge, and it's not quite a double charge. I was only able to get like a charge and a half in it. This is the coiled barrel, standard charge one ball.
charge to ball. Hexagon barrel, standard charge, one ball. Yep, that's right. Right along, I put my weld seam right along one of these ridges to give it the most strength. Round skinny barrel, the skelp method. Skinny barrel, skelp method. One and one half charge and one ball. Schedule 40 pipe, standard charge, one ball. Forty pipe, one and a half charge, one ball. Fire in the hole. Forgot to do this one. Octagon barrel, standard charge, double ball. Interesting. Okay, it's post-test analysis time. And uh, I want to throw this out there first. These measurements I'm about to give you, the pre-test, everything was cold. When I measured them after they fired, they were the barrels were still warm. So I think the small gains in size post firing is due to heat ex heat expansion and nothing else now we'll just go right down the list this skinny barrel here um i have this i have this laid out for standard charge and double charges and double charges full of balls um, i wasn't able to conduct all that like i wanted to I, I couldn't even get a double charge in any of these. The most I could get in and still cram a ball down was a charge and a half. But, uh, so the skinny barrel here, this was the, the skelp method, a flat bar turned to a C shape with quarter inch parent stock. Pre-testing, the maximum measurement I got was 0 0.8040 and the minimum re measurement was 0 0.7550. Now all the measurements were taken about a half inch in front of the touch hole. So the standard charge with one ball. Now standard, what I mean by standard charge is the standard max, the maximum charge that you would fire. Uh, 
the maximum standard charge you would fire. And since these are all 45 caliber, to me that's 90 grains of powder is what the most I would ever shoot normally. Uh, so the standard charge, one ball, the max 0 0.8000, the man was 0.7515. Now both of those are smaller than our pre-testing measurements. And that's because some fire scale popped off. So I would consider this a no change. Um, I didn't do a standard charge two ball. Should have. Uh, but I did a charge and a half, and that gave us 0 0.8020, 0 0.7545. 0 Again, both smaller than our pre-test measurements. The hexagon barrel. Now this blew on just the standard charge, one ball, 90 grains of 3F, and one ball. This was also the uh, scalp method, flat bar, made to a C and welded. But this was made with 3 8 parent stock. And I had orientated the weld so it would fall on a point. The, the, so it would be the weld would be in the thickest area. But I guess I didn't like this method. It didn't seem to weld up very good for me, and it shows. Oddly enough, it didn't split on the thinnest section. It split in the thickest section along my weld. Breach plug. Breach plug doesn't show any signs of, of the threads being peeled or sheared. So that tells me the barrel burst first. Okay, so hexagon barrel didn't even survive the first one. The round, this is the spiral, spiral wrap method. This was with 516th square bar. Pre-test was 0 0.9750, and the minimum was 0.9335. The standard charge, there was no change to the maximum measurement. The minimum was 0.9345. So again, I think that's just heat. I fire this with a uh, standard charge, two balls. Our maximum measurement was 0 0.9705, smaller than our pre-test max again fire scale popping off minimum 0.9335 no change to the pre-test okay, uh, octagon That's what's left of it so pre-test maximum 1.0210 Minimum 0 0.9740. Standard charge, one ball. Maximum, there is no change to the maximum outside measurement. In the minimum, there is, is 0 0.9800. So again, heat made that minimal change. I then fired a double charge, one ball out of it. Uh, no change to the maximum outside diameter. The minimum, 0.9835. Now I believe that is a little bit of swelling. But again, it had already fired one round to that point, so it got even hotter, so that may have just been more heat. And at the end, I, 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 I went back and fired a standard charge with two balls out of it, and that's when it split. Now the breech plug does show evidence of thread tear. And it's split right along the two weld seams. Now the uh, biggest part of the split here is about right where those two balls, the bottom of the first ball was sitting. 
Okay, now our Schedule 40 pipe. This is a uh, 0.5455 maximum outside diameter, 0.5385 minimum uh, outside diameter. And this Schedule 40 pipe, all I did was knock off the inside seam with a, uh, it's, it's a 3 8 pipe. I didn't have a 3 8 bit. I had like a 2164 or something like that. So I knocked off most of the internal seam. But uh, standard charge of one ball, 0.5465, minimum 0 0.5380. So smaller than our minimum and a little over our maximum, so heat. Um, I didn't fire a standard charge two ball out of it. I should have. Uh, max after a uh, one and a half charge, one ball. 0 0.5485, 0 0.5370. At point, uh, 0.5370 minimum, that's smaller than our pretest. Don't know why. And at point 0.5485, that's a little bigger than our pretest, but again, I had fired one round previous. Now, I, I welded all these in the worst way possible. I didn't clean my material, and I just threw on 20 Mule Team Borax, which is not the best flux. I said if I'm going to do this again, I would uh, use Iron Mountain Flux, which is much better. It's anhydrous borax and metal powder. You want something to stick and stay stuck, Iron Mountain will do it. Uh, I learned a lot from these tests, and I can't wait to start forging the full size one. Now, even though this two bar method failed, I think I'm going to try this again for the full size, but this time clean my material use Iron Mountain Flux. See if that makes a difference. One more thing I forgot to say that I was really wanting to say was a key takeaway from this testing is uh, it's not how much powder you put behind the ball. It's how much weight is in front of that powder that will really pressure test your barrel.